Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 2, Introduction to NX. This video is supplemented by the given PowerPoint. Please keep in mind that there are multiple versions of NX. Most of the features do not change from version to version. However, the display and the location of the icons and toolbars may vary. Let's just start by opening NX. This is the welcoming window. To start a document, simply click on the new icon. A new window will show up. Depending on the application, you could choose between a model, assembly, drawing, or any other application that you wish to do. At the same time, you could choose the type of dimensions that you would like to use. You change them here. You choose between either millimeters or inches. Let's just start with model, millimeters, and click OK. This is the primary screen given by an X. The toolbar position and icons may be different depending on the modifications done by previous users. The main components of this screen are the main bar. This provides drop-down menus which includes all the tasks available in NX. The NX toolbars. These toolbars are organized based on the tasks to be performed. More details about each one of them will be provided later on. The select toolbar. This toolbar provides all the tools to ensure that the necessary items are properly selected. The direct the sketch shows all the tools to create a proper sketch. The resource bar. It provides information about the model, online resources, help, history, etc. The graphic window shows the model and its components. The downtown coordinate system has the three primary planes and the three main axes. In the resource bar, we can find the part navigator. This is basically a history of all the sketches and features performed to create an object. The navigator would allow the user to suppress and activate features. Another important component are the constraints. As we will see in future lectures, constraints are essential logical operators to ensure that an object and an assembly maintain their size and their position with respect to other elements. Before we start, let me talk about how the PowerPoint and the textbook shows you how to access a specific command. If it shows menu, it means that you go to the main toolbar and select from the drop-down menu. If it says toolbar, it means that you could go directly to the specific toolbar and choose the given icon. Let's just start with a brand new sketch. For example, if it's menu, you go to menu, insert, and select a sketch. Or you could go directly to the main toolbar and select a sketch. When you start on a sketch, a new window will appear. In general, in NX, the highlighted sections need to be completed before you could continue. To create on a sketch, the first step is to create the plane. For a brand new object, your three choices are going to be the three main downtown planes. We're going to select the XY plane. Notice that as you select it, NX is asking you to verify your selection. Notice that you could have different directions of how you do the sketch. You could revert that direction by simply clicking on this icon. Once you have made your selection, you click OK. Notice that immediately NX will rotate and it will give you a view that is perpendicular to the surface where you're going to do your sketch. Before we start with the different sketching tools, it is important to understand how to use the snap points in an X. The snap points allow you to select a specific options in a line or a curve, such as intersection, midpoint, endpoint, arc, quadrant point, etc. We will use these features as we go along in an X. All the tools necessary to create an sketch are given in the direct sketch toolbar. Let's start with a polyline. 
click on the icon. A polyline would allow you to create a straight line on an arc, one after the other one, without having any breaks. Let's just start with a straight line. Notice that as you click on the straight line, a menu will be given to you. This means the position where you would like to start the line. You could enter the position by simply entering with the keyboard, or you could click at any position in the screen. So you click. Once I do that, it gives me the choice of entering the length and the angle for the line. Once again, you could enter the information using the keyboard or by clicking on the screen. If what you're interested in is given the location of the end line as coordinate system, you could simply change to the XY point. Notice that the menu changed. You could now enter the position using the keyboard or simply clicking in the location that you wanted to finish. Notice that as soon as we clicked, dimensions were created by an X. We will see later on how to modify these dimensions and to make sure that they are properly done. If you want to now go into an arc, simply click on the arc. Once again, notice that you could provide the ending point of the arc by positioning, or you could simply change to the parameters of given the radius and the angle. You could go into the different features, one after the other one, depending on what your object looks like. Once you are done with your polyline, simply press escape to finish. Let's now learn how to create a rectangle. Click on the rectangle icon. NX has three different ways of creating a rectangle. You could use two points or three points. If you have two points, simply click on the icon and select the two different points where you would like your rectangle to be. Once again, you could do it by coordinates or by size, depending on the information that you have. Let's do it by two points. Select. If you wanted three points, you have two choices. Click, click the second point, and then you click the third one. The third choice is you select the center, the side, and then the final width. Let's now create a straight line. Choose the icon. Once again, to create a straight line, you could do it either by coordinates or by sizes. You click on the first point, and then you click on the second one. Notice that the difference between polyline and straight line is that polyline will continuously give you the choices of continue with a straight line or with an arc. And a straight line feature only allows you to do one straight line at a time. Let's now learn how to create an arc. Go to the arc icon. There are two different methods of how to create an arc. The first method uses three different points in the curve. You start with the beginning point, the ending point, and the third point will indicate the size of the radius. The second method allows you to select the middle point and then two adjacent points. What you could have is a measurement of the angle between those two points. Once again, when you create an arc or any other feature, you'll always have two choices, either the coordinates or the parameters to enter the information. Let's now learn how to create a circle. Go to the circle icon. There are two methods of how to create the circle. The first method allows you to select the center point and then the size of your circle. The second method allows you to select three different points in the curve. For example, first, second, and then third. Let's now learn how to create points Simply go to the point icon and select the different points that you would like to add. Let's now learn how to create an ellipse. 
go to the direct a sketch toolbar and select the ellipse icon a new window will show the first step is to select the center point of the ellipse at this moment you could change the size of the major radius and the minor radius if needed You could also change the rotation of the ellipse by changing the angle. Once you are done with all the changes, simply press OK. Let's learn now how to make an spline. Go to the spline icon in the Direct the Sketch toolbar. There are two different ways of creating a spline, by poles or through points. Let's start with the through points. Once you make your selection, select the points that you would like the spline to go through. Select the points. Once you're done with your selection, press OK. Noting that in this case, the spline goes through every single one of the points that we chose. Let's go for the second choice. Let's go through by poles. Once again, you select the location of the poles. Once you're done with your selection, press OK. Notice that in this case, the poles are created and a spline is also created. However, the spline does not go through every single one of the poles. Let's now learn how to create a fillet. A fillet allows you to change a sharp corner into a curve. Let's go to the fillet icon. And you have two different choices. The first choice allows you to remove the corner completely. The second one creates the fillet without removing the corner. Let's try both choices. The first one, you select the first edge, the second edge, and then you could provide the radius. Once again, you have the choice of simply clicking on the screen or providing a value. Let's do the second choice. Select the edge, the second edge, let's provide the radius. Now notice that the fillet is created, however the corner remains. Let's now learn how to create a chamfer. A chamfer is a transitional edge that is created between two adjacent lines. Let's go to the chamfer icon. The first step is to select the two adjacent lines. Select the lines and then we select the method to be used. The first method is symmetric. It means that the distance between the ending points of the chamfer to the edge are exactly the same. Choose the distance, and then notice that the edge is removed. If you want to maintain the curves, simply unclick this button over here. Let's go for the second choice, asymmetric. Select the lines, you first have to lock one distance, let's say 15, and then select the other distance. Now notice that the distance between the chamfer and the edge point are different. The third choice is offset an angle. You select a distance and an angle. Select the lines, select the distance, let's see 15, and an angle, let's see, of 60. Once you are done with your sketch, you need to finish it. Simply go to the Finish a Sketch icon, click on it. Notice that it will become blue. If you need to modify this sketch, simply go to the part navigator, select the sketch that you want to modify, and double click. Notice that it becomes green, it means that you can modify it. Always make sure to finish the sketch before you start a new sketch or a new feature. If you need to hide or suppress the, this sketch, simply go to the part navigator and then click on it. This will not delete it, it will simply 
disactivate it, or simply hide it for a second. If you do need to, to delete the sketch, simply select the sketch and click delete. Notice that this action could be undone by simply pressing Ctrl Z. When creating sketches or features, it is important to know how to manage or change the display. For example, you may zoom in by selecting the icon and go back into a specific features. If you want to go back to full screen, simply press this icon or press Ctrl F. If you would like to pan your feature, simply select this icon and move it side to side. If you would like to rotate it, simply select this icon and do so. If you want a specific view, simply go to this icon and select the desired view. Isometric, front, side, and so on. An alternative way to modify the display in an X is by using the mouse. For example, to select, use the left button. To access any shortcut, use the right button. To zoom in and out, simply roll the wheel. To zoom, use the left, the middle buttons at the same time, and drag. To pan, use the right, the middle buttons at the same time, and drag. To rotate, use the middle button and drag. Make sure that you practice this movement so you are more comfortable when displaying things in an X. It is also important to learn different hotkeys, which are shortcuts to some of the functions in an X. The most important hotkeys are given in this table. Make sure that you explore it for more details and have it for your reference. This is the end of lecture two, introduction to an X. Make sure that you complete all the quizzes, review all the materials given in the PowerPoint and chapters one and two from your textbook, and be ready to start class assignments.